four minutes and 57 seconds left. What are we doing here? <laughs> I'm going to leave this. This is a fun timer. It's a fun timer. Yeah. Oh, Space. It's got happy, happy music. The final frontier. Oh, did I share my sound? Tell me if you can hear it or not. Mm -hmm. You can. Alex, welcome. Five minutes, opt-in. We're doing it today. I'm excited because we're going to talk about why cold calling gets a bad rap. You hear it all the time. Cold calling's dead. Stop cold calling. It doesn't work. Cold calls are invasive, blah, blah, blah. We at Demand Drive, and personally, I think cold calling still has a place in the modern SDRs toolbox. Um, be curious to get your take on it and hear what you think uh, where cold calling kind of fits in with the modern SDR. Yeah, for sure. I think one of the important things that you have to note, and you know, you, there's thousands probably of blogs and videos about there about cold calling is dead, doesn't work, whatever is millions, millions <laughs> for sure. Um, you have to define what cold calling means to you. So mm. to, to us, I'd say cold calling is any time that a prospect gets a call they weren't expecting from someone they didn't know. What that doesn't take into account is how much the SDR on the other side actually learns about the prospect, researches, knows whether or not they should be calling. I think it used to be, obviously there was a lot less data available, but you used to be able to get away with a list of names with a list of numbers and you just go, you ask them the questions and that's that. But we've evolved <laughs> so much past that, that now that name has stuck because it's, it feels the same to the prospect, mm -hmm. but the SDR's process should be drastically different by now. If it's not, right. then it should be dead. I think that's what those articles and, and videos are really talking about. For sure. And and to your example about blogs, about cold calling, we have plenty ourselves. Um, thinking back to a, an older, much older, think like eight years ago blog that was written by Lindsay, our, our CEO and co-founder, where she talked about an experience that she had with somebody who cold called her in the coldest sense of the word, like didn't know who she was, just talked at her for a minute, didn't ask any real questions. Like that's the type of cold calling that it, I know you're referring to and what we want to move away from. And that example serves as a good baseline for what reps should be doing to warm up those calls and really make sure that they aren't going in as cold as possible, um, specifically around research, around, um, we call it being the Delta, uh, giving prospects information that they can't find online and around asking good questions. So um, I'd wanna dive into each one of those kind of individually and talk about them a little bit. I'll start with the top one and we can kind of go from there. Sure. Um, but thinking about research, not knowing who you're calling to your point about just having names on a list and kind of dialing through, that needs to get tossed out the window. Because at this point, if somebody reaches out to a prospect and they aren't immediately cutting through the noise and grabbing attention in the first like five seconds, you're getting hung up on. It's just not worth people's time. You you have to know why you're reaching out to somebody, but more importantly, like the why is rooted in who they are, right? If I'm reaching out to you, Alex, as a marketing communications manager versus somebody with a totally different title, the message can't be the same because it's not going to be compelling to you as a person. And that's where I think a lot of the differentiation comes in with cold calling versus warm calling in terms of like, who am I talking to? What do they care about? Can I walk in your shoes and really understand your pains and challenges? Like That's the stuff you have to know going in as an SDR. Right. And if you don't know, then you're almost better off not calling them because they're going to pick up the phone and they're not going to be happy about it. <laughs> Who are you? Why are you calling? No, yeah. I don't do that. Why would you yeah. ever think that that's in my job description? Boom. Right. All right. Point number two. Next one. That's the be the Delta. So instead of talking at somebody and regurgitating information, you got to give them something they can't find online. Um, at this point, buyers know everything about your solution pretty much. They can research you online. They can go to G2 Crowd and Captera and learn about your competitors and all that stuff. So if you just regurgitate your website information on a call, they're like, sick, I already know. Yeah. We're good. You got to tell them something that they don't know and actually have a conversation and sort of tease out what matters to them rather than just toss value props that they probably already read on a website and hope something sticks with them. Exactly. And that's really about asking questions, which I think will lead to your next one and not talking about your product and yourself, because like you said, they already know you want to be having a conversation, right? Mm -hmm. 
and that's where the compelling questions point comes in. You, if I just ask you questions and you answer yes or no, and it's sort of like an order take type situation, I'm not really doing my job as an STR. I could be a robot at that point, right? Um, what I want to do when I ask questions is actually learn whether or not my solution is valuable to you, because if it isn't, I don't want to waste your time. Uh, there's, I forget what the acronym, acronym is, but it's like some will, some won't, so what? someone else i forget but the idea being that like some people will want to buy your solution great some people won't and that's just the way it is and you kind of have to understand that if they're not in market or in uh, their audience isn't the right icp for you you kind of just have to move on and go to the next one because some people will just never buy from you so if you're not asking those questions to tease that information out you could just be talking it at, at nothing basically and that's not it's not worth anybody's time yeah yeah, to, to like sum it up, at least that point, it's you already know all about your product as an SDR. They know enough about it. If they if they really wanted it, they would have inbounded. So you just need to find out more about them. That's like mm -hmm. the missing piece of information that you're really reaching for there. It's not as educational, you know, save the deep, deep dive on the educational side for the actual call that you set up. You really just want to know, do they need us? And the only way you can know that is by learning as much about them as you can. Well said. All right, AJ, 15 seconds. Tell everyone about opt-in. Opt-in, quick, five-minute videos, no fluff, actionable tips. You can find us on our YouTube, on our LinkedIn, on our Instagram, and on the website, demandrev.com. All right. Fucking... Do you hear my oven finish heating up there? I, I did, actually. Beep, 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 beep.